Be honest. Have you ever sat down and watched The Empire Strikes Back? It's a busy world out there. Sometimes it can be hard to find the time to watch all the classics, especially when it seems that there's something new hitting our screens every week. Well, to make sure that you have all of the necessary Star Wars knowledge in a very efficient package, we've put together a quick TLDW for ya. Too long? Didn't watch for the uninitiated. Heck, you might even just want to relive an old favorite in a short amount of time. Plus, we'll try to point out some of the finer details to round out your intergalactic education. Let's blast off to a galaxy far, far away and break down Star Wars Episode 5, The Empire Strikes Back. On with the show. This is a Star Wars movie, so there's gonna be an opening crawl. The gigantic yellow letters remind us of that one time the Rebels blew up the Death Star. After it blew up, they had to relocate to Hoth, because who the hell would come looking for life on a frozen wasteland like this? Well... Darth Vader would, and he's sending probes everywhere. And look at them fly. Man, practical effects are so much fun. Movie magic by industrial light and magic, it never gets old. Luke and Han are riding around on tauntauns looking for life readings and placing sensors. Our boy Luke sees something hit the snow and decides to go check it out on his own. Not too bright this one, but hey, a hero's gotta look for adventure. No! When he departs from his predetermined path, Bam! He's clocked in the face by a space yeti. I'm told they're called wampas. Now, if we're going to be summarizing a Star Wars movie faithfully, we'll need to make sure we're discussing the wipes. The folks in the editing suite were just going nuts with these, and I wouldn't have it any other way. Wipe one, check. Han arrives back at the base, not too sure where Luke ended up. He swings by the Millennium Falcon and gets yelled at by Chewie for not helping with repairs. Being the unattached, cool and collected smuggler that he is, Han announces without much fanfare that he's gotta go. There's a gigantic space slug smoking hookah somewhere out there, and he's expecting some money. Princess Leia Organa is not too impressed with this, though. She doesn't show it, but she's got a bit of a thing for Han. You might not have noticed, especially due to how often they insult one another, but the love theme plays whenever they get sassy in the same room. It's very subtle. The droids, playing their comic relief role as per usual, interrupt this emotionally fraught moment by wondering aloud where the heck their buddy Luke could be. C-3PO thinks he might be in danger. Han jumps on this excuse to not actually leave without giving Leia a clear win and runs out into the snow to find Luke. None of the other rebels want to help because it's just too chilly outside. Han has charisma to keep him warm, and a tauntaun, I guess. C-3PO was right. Luke is in danger. He's fused to the ceiling of an ice cave, don't ask how his feet aren't frostbitten to hell, and surrounded by the bones of other unfortunate Wampa victims. To make matters even worse, his lightsaber is out of reach. I mean, thank goodness it didn't fall out before he was stuffed into the cave ceiling, but yeah, no saber for Luke. Not until he remembers that he's got the Force, and pulls it into his hand just in time to chop himself free. He also chops off the Wampa's right arm for good measure. Poor thing. Remember this for later, he chops off the right arm. Back at the base, C-3PO claims that they will indeed see Master Luke again. This droid must be a soothsayer, I tell you what. But with no sign of Luke or Han, the rebels have to close the shield doors. It's just too gosh darn nippy out there. You figure these soldiers would be a little bit more concerned that their top pilot slash Jedi is potentially dying out in the tundra, but oh well. R2 gives them a 725 to 1 chance of survival, which is actually pretty generous. Circle wipe to a frozen corpse in the snow. Oh wait, that's Luke with the face full of that white powder. Don't go to the light, buddy. Or at the very least, don't listen to the force ghost of Ben Kenobi for too long. The elderly deceased Jedi advises Luke to seek out Master Yoda on Dagobah and trusts that Luke will actually remember anything from this near-death hallucinatory state if he's rescued. As Kenobi fades away, Han rushes up, just in time too, as both Luke and Han's Tauntaun succumb to the cold at the exact same moment. Just as good an excuse as any to use an unconscious man's lightsaber to pry open an ostrich beast in the snow. Mm, would you look at that stinky, slimy sleeping bag? In you go, Luke. The next morning, Rogue Two takes a nice scenic flight and comes across Han and Luke. Diagonal wipe to Mark Hamill in a space diaper floating in a goo tube. You just don't get images like this outside of 80s sci-fi. 
The diaper goo tube seems to have done Luke well as we get our first true main character reunion moment of the movie. Also, to keep Han around a little longer, nobody's allowed off planet until shields are up. For the soldier's safety, not just a plot contrivance. Leia, secretly glad her hunky man is sticking around a little bit longer, decides to display her excellent use of colorful language. I think you just can't bear to let a gorgeous guy like me out of your sight. I don't know where you get your delusions, laser brain. Laser brain. Scruffy looking nerf herder. To really drive the point home, she gives Luke a big open mouth kiss. Hmm, that surely won't get weird in the future. Now that the gang's back together, something exciting can happen. They find out that the meteorite Luke almost got devoured over was actually a probe droid. Chewie and Han fake it out and blast it to smithereens. But with the knowledge that the Empire has found them, it's time to evacuate. Good call, too. Vader's flagship picks up the transmission from the droid, and the dark, helmeted Sith immediately deduces that, yep, it's Hoth time. Vertical wipe! The rebels gear up to skedaddle, and Luke gets a big bear hug from Chewbacca. Is that okay to say? Should I call it a Wookiee hug, or what? Han opts out of a hug, instead choosing the classic head nod, good luck kid. Vader finds out that his admiral ham-fistedly popped out of light speed too close to the planet, alerting the rebels of their presence. He books a quick Teams call in his Microsoft calendar and hashes it out with his employee, and by that I mean he pulls the old FaceTime force joke. Rest in peace, Admiral Ozzel. Welcome to the party, Admiral Piet. Back on Hoth, Leia is giving a little pep talk to the pilots about to zoom out there as fast as humanly possible. She's got a plan involving ion cannons and a whole lot of beelining. Luke hops in his ship with Dac and seems really fond to the guy. Seems like the kind of character who will be around for a good long while. Ah! That. That. Solid dude. And with that, the battle begins. Imperial walkers to the north catch the attention of the rebels, who head over to see what they can do. They even go quickly enough that a couple of ships flicker out of existence for a second, which is cool. God, I love the stop motion going on here. AT-ATs and ATSTs are some of the coolest vehicles in the Star Wars universe, and you can quote me on that. Did you know that ILM studied the movements of elephants to get these to walk the way they did? Also, can we take a moment to appreciate the rebels' snow gear? What a fashion statement. Right, the battle. Well, blasters don't don't work against these armored behemoths, so it's time for some harpoons and cables. Luke's gotta lead his comrades to harpoon and cable victory. Nothing wrong with a little tripping on the battlefield, right? This works for a moment, but not much longer. Luke can only pull off so much main character heroism at one time, after all. Most of the airborne homies get God, and so does Luke. He hops out of his busted rig pretty much unharmed though, thank goodness. As everything at the rebel base goes a little sideways, Han checks up on Leia. Oh, how sweet. He tries his hardest to play it off all cool, though. Did he really? You be the judge. With the evac in full swing, the walkers are turning the tide of the battle. The rebels still have some tricks up their sleeves, though. Like Luke grappling his way up and stabbing a walker until it totally explodes. Take a shot every time Luke swings on some sort of rope or cable. You'll be three deep by the end of the movie. It's cool that Luke managed to melee a giant war machine to death, but that doesn't really change how this battle's going. The Empire calls for maximum firepower and takes out the generator powering the energy shields. And would you look at those little rebels run. Han and Leia get cut off by a collapsing tunnel, which forces them back to the Falcon. It's here that Vader enters the equation on foot, along with some Imperial stormtroopers. If we're being honest, the rebels' winter wardrobe is a little nicer. The Falcon is in in rough shape, and our plucky band of underdogs is having a tough time getting it off the ground. This gives the Imperials enough time to set up a mounted machine blaster, but it's not enough to stop them from getting off the ground in their big old bucket of bolts. Luke regroups with R2, and the good guys are looking pretty solid. He's not gonna rendezvous with his pals, though. He's taking Hallucination Ben's advice and going to the Dagobah system. Not even R2 can convince him otherwise, and we know how convincing he can be. Meanwhile, C-3PO is trying to get Han's attention regarding something important, but it's more important that Han has someone to wail on a little, so he's ignored over and over again. Han attempts to hit light speed, but would you look at that? The hyperdrive motivator is damaged. 3PO, speak up. But who needs light speed when you have an oncoming asteroid belt? Han takes full advantage, entering the dangerous Space Rock Emporium, this time with the odds of survival being 3720 to 1. Still seems pretty good to me. 
Thinking he's better off seeing a big one coming, he does some fancy flying through the topography of a more moon-sized asteroid and cozies into a convenient cave. Keep an eye out here for flying potatoes, popcorn, and flaming pilots. Those all look like asteroids, right? Diagonal wipe. Luke and R2's road trip comes to an end above Dagobah, a place with no cities or tech, but plenty of life. Immediately upon entering the atmosphere, all visibility is gone. The force can't help you this time, Luke. Well, not yet. Go crash land in a swamp, why don't you? Doesn't R2 just make you smile? What a cute little guy. He even falls cutely. Even getting attacked by a swamp monster and tossed like a football is a blast, although he could use a shower at this point. Diagonal wipe again! Inside the Imperial flagship, we get a quick glimpse of Vader's messed up dome. Boy, does he ever love it inside that giant metal egg? He dons his helmet, spins around in his villain chair, and tells his boys to find the Falcon or die trying. Speaking of the Falcon, they've settled down in the cave. It doesn't stay settled for long, though. The ship definitely needs repairs, but that's not happening quite yet. Back on Dagobah, Luke sets up camp and gets some power flowing for R2. As soon as he starts questioning the very existence of Yoda, a little green dude shows up. Man, I wish I could make that strategy work for me. I don't even know if the mentor of my dreams is even real. What am I doing here? Well, this messed up little gremlin man starts speaking in riddles and taking bites of Luke's dinner, so Luke gets a little pissy. But the angrier Luke gets, the more mischievous the creature becomes. He claims to know Yoda and will take Luke to him, but only after they eat. Just not the food that Luke brought. Inward circle wipe. 3PO figures out that the Falcon's negative power coupling needs to be replaced, which is taken surprisingly well by Han. It's during these repairs that Han and Leia enact their long-standing mechanic fantasy. Ooh, he's a scoundrel. Maybe there's a little bit of gaslighting going on here, but it's all in the service of steamy on-screen romance. All of this leads to a smooch, which is interrupted by C-3PO. Wipe. Vader continues talking to a variety of holograms, demanding that everyone look for the Falcon in the asteroid field. Nothing could be more important than this. Everybody look for the Falcon in the asteroid field. The newly appointed Admiral then tells Vader that the Emperor wants to talk, so obviously now they gotta move the ship out of the asteroid so Mr. Tough Guy can talk to his boss. A gigantic hologram of a hideous vampire man tells Vader that there's been a disturbance in the Force. Namely, Anakin Skywalker's bouncing baby boy causing a ruckus. Vader has no idea how this could be possible, but he's told to search his feelings. This line will stick with Vader. Just you wait and see. Now, the Emperor doesn't want Luke fudging around in the galaxy. No, he's much too dangerous for that. But Vader, Vader wants him as an ally. Hmm, wonder why that would be. Wipe, wipe, wipe. It's rainy and cozy on Dagobah, and R2 gets a nice natural shower. Luke hangs out with the little green man in his hut and eats root leaf. Luke doesn't know why he's hanging out with this guy, nor does he like the root leaf. He bangs his head off the extremely low ceiling. Poor guy. Apparently, they had to do that 16 times before the director was satisfied. This petite hermit finally reveals himself as Yoda in a moment of frustration, as it seemed like Luke had literally zero patience. Even then, it takes Luke a second to put two and two together and realize that he's been rolling his eyes at Jedi Master Yoda this entire time. Whoops! Using his 800 years of experience, Yoda deduces that Luke is not ready. Too much anger, excitement, and adventure underneath that boyish facade. You gotta focus on what you're doing, not what you're going to be doing. Yoda thinks Luke is reckless and also a little too old. How is he supposed to grow a Padawan braid and not look like he works at an all-inclusive resort? And with that, he promises that Luke will be afraid. Ah! Inward circle wipe. Inside of the cave, there's something outside of the ship. And our plucky rebel force heads out wearing their airline approved oxygen masks to see what's up. Han snipes a Minoc chewing on his power cables and a bunch more arrive, swooping and swaying. These gossamer winged creatures are the least of their worries though. They've been inside of a gigantic phallic worm this whole time. Remember when I said take a shot every time Luke is rope swinging? Well, here's another. He does his best Tarzan impression with Yoda on his back like a toddler. He's doing flips in the forest, running like a maniac. What's he learning? Well, to stay away from the dark side. To stay calm, peaceful, to be unlike Vader. Also, Luke's looking pretty buff here. Time for a test. How unlike Vader can Luke be? Well, Yoda drops him off at the place of evil and tells him that he doesn't need weapons where he's headed. Luke doesn't listen and treks off into the fog. Hey, check it out. An earth lizard and an earth snake. 
I guess alternate universe Harrison Ford wouldn't do too well on Dagobah. Slow motion Vader jump scare. Luke and Vader touch saber tips for a second and then Luke goes berserk and cuts his rival's damn head off. Traumatizing. But wait, could it be? That's Luke's face inside of the helmet. You killed your own damn self, Luke. You're basically Vader. But what could this all mean? Clock wipe to the Imperial fleet. We've got a wicked lineup of bounty hunters awaiting their assignment, but one seems to stand out among the rest. That's Boba Fett, baby. Bad news for our rebels, that's for sure. The good news is that they escaped the dick worm without getting crunched. They're still being tailed by the Empire, but I'd say it's probably better to get shot down in battle instead of being eaten by an asteroid worm. Even with the new hasty repairs, light speed is unattainable. Cue the Han breakdown. It's not fair. It's not my fault. The self-pity isn't long-lived, and Han comes up with a crazy new plan. They're gonna put all their shield juice in the front and go right at the Star Destroyer. C-3PO can't even get the odds out of his speakers this time. Holy moly, their plan worked. <laughs> what a move. The Vader boys do not have eyes on the Falcon. Luke is still on Dagobah, whipping stones and doing calisthenics with Yoda. What a big master move, eh? Taking a perch on your hand standing pupil's foot, Luke's ship starts to sink, breaking his focus and disappointing Master Yoda. Yoda really wants Luke to unlearn what he knows and learn a new way of being. Luke says he'll try and gets shut down by do or do not. There is no try. Well, he does not because the ship does not come out of the water. But Yoda, short king indeed, reminds him that size matters not, hmm? And with that, he launches into some force lore, essentially letting Luke know that it's all around us. This pep talk slash lesson isn't enough to convince Luke that the motion of the ocean is more important, so Yoda just has to show him up, yanking that ship out of the water like it's nothing. When the Jedi Master places the X-Wing down, Luke just has to touch it to make sure it's real. I don't believe it. That is why you fail. Yikes. Inward circle wipe. Dudes are getting dropped to their knees by Vader for losing the Falcon. And there's still no sign of the Falcon. You want to know why? Well, that's because the Falcon is hiding on the Star Destroyer itself. Immaculate move by Han Balls of Steel Solo. C3 balls of aluminum foil, P.O. wants to surrender, but gets shut down. It's for the best. And after a short wait, Han disengages the Falcon and floats away with the garbage. He sets course for Bespin, where his old pal Lando runs a gas mine, and even gets a little kiss on the cheek for ingenuity. The getaway would have been perfect if a funky little stand-up spacecraft wasn't right on their tail. More handstands and force practice for Luke. This time, even R2 gets a little ride. However, thoughts of his friends in danger on Bespin breaks Luke's focus once again, and even Yoda can't confirm or deny their fates. Inward circle wipe! Again! The Falcon doesn't exactly get a warm welcome in the skies around Cloud City, with guards firing some warning shots. They end up getting clearance to land on platform 327, and wow, does that ever look cool. Upon touchdown, there's no one there to greet them, which is a little suspicious. But when Lando comes out, he comes out a swingin'. First, he fakes out Han with a mini tirade, and then he brings up his history with the Millennium Falcon. Then he flirts with Leia like the old smoothie he is. Han asks for repairs and is granted some, and Lando shows off just how gosh darn responsible and important he is these days. C-3PO runs into a familiar face, but the familiar face is not happy to see him. Ichuta. Then he sees something he shouldn't have and is blasted to smithereens. Literal smithereens. Luke gets impatient with his training, especially considering the danger his friends could be in. Yoda wants to convince him otherwise, and even Ben gets in on the action. They preach patience. They tell Luke to avoid the dark side. Yoda may have even offered up some more home-cooked root leaf, but nothing is enough to make Luke stay. He heads off, and Yoda gives Obi-Wan a sassy, I told you so. That boy was supposed to be their last hope, but no, there is another. Intrigue, followed by a windshield wiper wipe. What a fancy room for Leia to wait in. She's real worried about 3PO, who definitely shouldn't be gone this long. She's also worried about Han leaving, but that's the quiet part said out loud. Chewie manages to scavenge the droid's disparate parts in a junk pile heading for the furnace. He snags his head from an Ugnaught and brings 3PO back to the others. Once more, Lando comes through with the Riz. He invites everyone to take a walk with him, and on this walk, he brags about how little the Empire controls in this area. In fact, he claims that he just made a deal that will keep the Empire out forever. And would you look at that? 
The Empire, Vader and Boba Fett and Stormtroopers, oh my. The works. Han, being a man of action, just unloads a clip into Vader, but no luck. Vader will not be felled by some common blaster. The rebels are invited in, and it's not for a fancy dinner party. In their funky underground prison cell, Chewie is quite upset. This does give him time to start piecing C-3PO back together, which apparently just means sticking the head back on the body. If you've done a Star Wars Lego set, then you could probably do this too. Turns out that 3PO stumbled upon some stormtroopers before getting blasted to bits. Han is rigged up to some sort of crude torture device, which Vader sees too personally. Lando and his bald-headed computer guy wait outside with Fett. A deal is made between Vader and Fett. The bounty hunter can bring Solo to Jabba once Vader has Skywalker. Lando is threatened with an Imperial garrison being stationed at his spot, and Leia and Chewie are supposedly never going to leave Cloud City again. Han is brought back to Chewie's prison room, where the Wookiee has just installed 3PO's head backwards. Leia's dropped in as well. They didn't even ask Han any questions. He's looking pretty worse for wear until Lando arrives and tells him about the trap being set for Luke. Han gets pretty sprightly at the sight of his friend turned traitor. He claps Lando in the face but is spared. Upward wipe. Vader oversees the construction of a carbonite freezing rig which he plans to use on Luke, but only after a quick test drive on Solo. Chewie wears 3PO like a backpack on the way to the inaugural human freezing and loses it a little when he discovers that his buddy is getting turned into a tabletop. Han gets a big smooch before being pulled away. And just in case you ever wanted to know how to respond when your crush admits her love for you, well, maybe don't follow Han's lead. I love you. I know. Feels like most wouldn't respond very well to that. Chewie wails as the Ugnaughts rev up their engines and Vader looks on. Leia looks on in horror at the big plank her lover has become. But would you look at those lips. Hoo hoo. Han is reported to be alive and in perfect hibernation, which is great news for Boba. Luke enters the equation, signaling that it's time for the big showdown. Vader alters the deal with Lando and commands that Leia and Chewie be taken to an Empire ship. Horizontal wipe! Luke lands and is looking for trouble. He and R2 stalk the light-drenched hallways, trying to find anything that will lead him to his pals. He almost gets domed by Boba Fett, but those two aren't destined for a showdown. Not today. Lando, feeling bad about the whole betrayal thing, dials some magic codes into his space Apple Watch, which activates Computer Head Man. As Luke has a quick gunfight with some baddies, Leia recognizes him and channels Admiral Akbar for a moment. It's a trap! But, as we discovered in Dagobah, our boy Luke doesn't like listening to other people. He strolls in solo to the steamiest room imaginable, leaving even R2 behind a closed door. Vader knows that Luke has the Force, but is not a Jedi. This matters not, though, because it's time to duel! Blue versus Red. Good versus Evil. Hero versus Villain. Luke's heroic presence is finally enough to force Lando to make a good call, and he sticks up to the Empire. Chewie almost chokes him out, and Leia doesn't want his help either, but they're gonna get it. Come hell or high water. He claims that there is still a chance that they could save their smuggling scoundrel pal, but their foot speed isn't enough. Boba zooms off just as they get outside, and now there are stormtroopers all over their ass. R2 doesn't find cover and just sort of does figure eights, but still doesn't get shot. He loses his lightsaber, is knocked down the stairs, and gets force pushed into a hole. But good golly, does he ever zip right out of there. Look at that vertical. We're now three for three when it comes to hanging off of stuff, where he's found yet another rope-like thing to dangle from. This move apparently is enough to confuse Vader until Luke can snap his saber back into his hand. The fight takes on a mental aspect as Vader invokes Obi-Wan and tells Luke that actually anger is good. Apparently that's all Luke needed to hear because all of a sudden he's forcing Vader back and off of a ledge. Anger power doesn't last though, especially when some dude in a full black fit starts chucking random debris at you from across the room. At that point, anger is just gonna make things harder to dodge. Luke can't keep up with all the random shit being thrown at him, so he's knocked out of a window and dangled over a pit. Snap back to Leia absolutely blasting some stormtrooper while R2 attempts to hack a door. Turns out the droid's just been mainlining electricity, so Lando moves everyone along. Round two of door hacking works much better for our cute little robot pal. 
and he even manages to deploy his tactical fire extinguisher to provide some much needed cover. The remainder of the rebel squad hops into the Falcon and takes off. Vader jump scare 2.0, and it's not just a vision this time. Luke is not getting a free shot at this guy's head. Damn, that guy is just swinging. Full force home run derby style. Vader pushes Luke out onto a platform, just brute forcing him, and Luke gets a quick shot in on Vader's shoulder. I'm actually a strong believer that Vader would have spared Luke's arm had he not been mad about that little shoulder tap, but now Luke is armless, and what arm is he missing? That's right, his right arm, just like the wampa he so heartlessly chopped. But yeah, Luke's arm is now missing along with his lightsaber. Now that the boy is suddenly left-handed, Vader decides to try and talk some sense into him. His list of advice, don't get destroyed like your beloved mentor. Use your power to help me out. Learn from me, cause only I can help you. If you come with me, we can rule the galaxy. The dark side is good, actually. Also, I'm your dad. What? Luke doesn't believe it. Just like he didn't believe that Yoda could haul a spaceship out of the muck, but Luke's beliefs don't matter. The force is all around us and Darth Vader is his daddy. Vader pulls out that line he stole from the Emperor and tells his son to search his feelings. Luke's feelings say jump off this ledge into the abyss below. Good work, Luke's feelings. Even with his full mask on, you can tell exactly what expression is on Vader's face as Luke plummets into the pit below. Falling down this slide actually looks like a lot of fun, but then it drops him out into the open air where he hangs on to an antenna for dear life. He uses the force to call out to Ben and then realizes that Ben's been dead for a while, so instead he calls out to Leia. Thankfully, they recently installed 5G towers nearby, so this message does indeed make it to her, who turns the Falcon around to go pick him up. Luke drops in just in time, as some Imperial ships start to notice what's going on. As Luke and Leia have a nice reunion, Chewie and Lando rev their engines and begin their getaway. As Luke is tucked in nice and cozy, Lando tries for light speed one last time. Uh-oh. That fix might not have been so good. As is customary when piloting the Millennium Falcon, when something goes wrong, the pilot must yell, it's not my fault. Well, this time it isn't technically his fault because Vader had his men disable the hyperdrive while he was parked in the shop. R2 and C-3PO have a quick discussion about cybersecurity and trusting strange computers while Chewie heads down to fix the hyperdrive. All the while, Vader keeps sending mind blasts straight to Luke's dome, telling him to join him on the dark side. While everyone else is going kind of crazy, R2 decides it's time to fix everything and pops that hyperdrive back into gear. With that, the Falcon can finally escape, leaving Vader cheesed and a little despondent. One last wipe. This time, metronome style. The Falcon makes it back to the Rebel fleet, but it's not gonna stick around for long. Lando and Chewie are gearing up to go find Han, and Luke and Leia are resting up. Luke's feeling all right again, especially with the help of his new cybernetic arm. The split group plans to meet up at a rendezvous point on Tatooine, and Luke utters the most quotable of Star Wars quotes. May the Force be with you. Luke, Leia, and the droids watch on as the Falcon blasts off, and now we can roll the credits. Irvin Kershner, baby. Did you know that each of the original trilogy was directed by a different person? Knowledge is power. And with that, Star Wars Episode V is done. Luke's ready for more action, but will he be able to take on Vader and the rest of the Empire? Han is stuck in Carbonite and heading to Jabba's. Will he and Leia ever reunite? Well, considering that this movie came out in the 80s, you probably know the answers, but isn't it fun to relive all of this? Well, let us know what you're thinking down in the comments and make sure to subscribe to Cinematica for more like this. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.